overlooking the Matanzas River, perched between the Intracoastal Waterway and the city of St. Augustine, sits one of the oldest European fortifications in the New World. Hi, my name is Jill Leverett, and I'm a park guide here at Castillo de San Marcos National Monument in St. Augustine, Florida. The Castillo was built by Spain to protect the city of St. Augustine, and the reason they need to protect St. Augustine is because St. Augustine is protecting the coast of Florida. The coast of Florida was very vulnerable from attacks by the English, by pirates, because the Spanish treasure fleets liked to cruise right up the coast, coming up the Gulf Stream to go back to Europe. So Florida was a perfect place for pirates to hang out and attack these treasure fleets. So Spain realized they needed a permanent military installation on this east coast to protect that main source of income. The Castillo de San Marcos is the oldest masonry fortification in the United States but it wasn't the first built here. This is Fort Number 10, just for St. Augustine. Spain went through a series of nine wooden fortifications in uh, different locations throughout town that were all destroyed, either by enemies or the elements, before they finally got the money and the permission to build a stone one. The stone is called coquina, which is the only type of stone available in the area. It's simply fossilized beach, sand and seashells that have been compressed together for thousands of years. It's a relatively soft stone. It's porous, which means it leaks. If you get a close look at our walls, you can see there are plants growing out of it. But it also means that it stands up really well to cannon fire, because instead of shattering under the impact, it actually compresses and absorbs the cannonball. So they would just stick in like you were shooting BBs into styrofoam. Even with the unique protection of this coquina fort, many battles have taken place here. There have been three major sieges on the Castillo. Uh, the first one in 1702, the British attacked from Charleston. They lay siege for 51 days, ends in Spanish victory. 1740, the British attack from Georgia. They lay siege for about 28 days, ends in Spanish victory. And then in 1812, a bunch of Americans from Georgia are laying siege to St. Augustine. It's a campaign known as the Patriot War. That lasts almost six months, and it ends in Spanish victory. This place has never lost a battle. A large part of the city's longevity was due in part to the protection provided by the Castillo. The shape of the fort is very interesting. Uh, if you get an aerial view of it, you'll notice it kind of looks like a turtle. Um, it's a, a square with four large diamond-shaped bastions on each corner of the square. And the bastions do two very important things. They give you interlocking fields of fire with your cannons, which means that any spot around the fort you can fire on from several different angles. And it also means there are no blind spots on our walls, because if you have somebody upstairs on the gun deck stationed on every corner, they can see every outside wall of the fort so nobody can sneak up on us. The fort was essential to the survival of the city because it was able to hold all of the residents during an attack. Protection behind coquina walls was one thing, but to be truly effective, the Castillo required weapons. The Castillo had room upstairs for uh, close to 70 cannons. The standard guns for the Castillo were 16, 18, and 24 pounders. That means they fire 16, 18, and 24 pound cannonballs. Pretty impressive when you think about it. And back then, the standard load of gunpowder was half the weight of the ball. So if you were firing a 24 pound cannonball, you'd be using 12 pounds of gunpowder to fire it. Imagine the noise that would make. 